In the world of the old ones, tanks, jets, and the like were obsolete relics of a bygone age. Wars were fought with advanced robotic war machines controlled by corporations. Clean, bottom line compliant, and depending on how you look at it, kind of green. That is until a glitch in the system caused the Faro war machines to turn against their masters, becoming the Faro plague that would lead the earth to temporary extinction. Thus, tanks, once again, became the spearhead for humanity's fight to delay the inevitable. As such, today we shall take the channel to new horizons and take a look at the MBT of the old ones. First, let us coin a name for this MBT. In honor of the U.S. tradition of naming their tanks after generals, such as the iconic World War II Sherman, I figured it makes sense to name her Harry's after the final commander of the U.S. Robotic Command. Then, since Harry's isn't a super fun name to say, I'm going to make the executive decision to give her the nickname Orthros, after the two-headed dog that guard the cattle of Geryon on the island of Erythia due to her twin railguns. Not going to lie, I'd have preferred Cerberus, but sadly, no third gun. This leaves us with the Harry's Orthros MBT. Pretty neat if you ask me but I'd love to hear what you'd call it in the comments below. Okay, now briefly onto the limited statistics of this armored beast that I was able to glean. The Orthros has a height of two alloys, a width of 2.7 alloys, and a length of 3.8 alloys. Given that Aloy herself is five foot six, it can be determined that the Orthros has a height of 11 feet, a width of 15 feet, and a length of 21 feet. She features twin rail guns or energy guns mounted on either side of the turret. Finally, she has a crew of at least two, one driver and one commander, if not more. Normally, I'd present a historical example from which to derive a few more statistics, such as tonnage or horsepower, but honestly, I didn't find anything I really thought was that close or exciting. I mean, sure, several vehicle systems have relatively similar aesthetic to her chassis, but that's about it. If you, on the other hand, think you found a great example, call it out. I'll be sure to take a look. Now for my favorite bit, taking a look at the pros, spoiler, there are a lot, cons, there are a few, and an interesting thing or two. Firstly, I'd like to point out Orthros's profile. It's petite as a good tank should be. Perhaps I've been looking at Fallout vehicles for too long, but that alone is incredibly refreshing. Next, I'm digging the details of the reactive armor plates on the front of the chassis. It's the bee's knees. Though how effective such a system would be against the zappers the Faro Zoids are packing is quite questionable. I'll give the Harrys a pass on that though, since it's quite possible, probable even, that these vehicles had to be taken out of mothballs and were designed for a completely different era of war. I also enjoy the fact the chassis was designed with protecting the tracks in mind. Over each track bed, there are what appear to be hinges upon which the track plating is suspended. In theory, this would allow the track armor to be either easily removed, or better yet, simply swung up and out of the way, allowing for easy maintenance. You love to see it. Then there is the fact this vehicle system proudly displays sensor systems on the front of her chassis, announcing to the world that the driver would at the very least be able to see the world outside of the vehicle. Imagine that. Now, that's not a high bar, mind you, but you would be surprised how often that hurdle isn't cleared. On a similar note, unlike the Chrysler's Patton from Fallout, Orthros actually has drive wheels present and accounted for. Functionality, oh my goodness me, that's nice to see. Also, I suppose, just as a general pro, I really appreciate the realism on display here. This tank chassis looks like a tank chassis, in an almost boring way, and that's a good thing in my book. It's also rusted to heckin' back in the game. Given the timelines in mind, probably not rusted enough, but still, it's far, far, far more realistic in its appearance than what you would find in another certain post-apocalyptic game out there. Just saying. In my final pro, I have to express my heartfelt thanks to the modeler for not including the dreaded rivet in this design. You are the best. A tank should not be riveted. Thank you. Then we come to the cons, starting with the turret, which I've got to admit certainly looks cool. I mean, who doesn't like the concept of a railgun? You're lying. Or better yet, two railguns. It's basic human nature. More is 
better. I assume modelers have taken this idea to heart, since I've only really examined two universes MBTs on this channel, and both have done it. Personally though, from a functionality standpoint, I don't like this approach. Yes, you could fire these bad boys together for massive penetration, or separately for an increased fire rate, but this design also comes with some pretty bad cons, such as the fact it increases the tank's overall weight, creates a larger hitbox, draws from the same ammo pool a single gun would have available, assuming the guns are rail guns and not just energy guns of some nature, but then they still draw from the same energy source, allows the enemy to take out two guns with one hit, and generally means installing two less capable guns rather than the largest, most capable available. Additionally, Unique to this particular implementation of dual guns is the distance between the two guns. This inherently makes it harder to aim, since the bore of the cannons are well off the center line, making it seem likely, at least to me, that these cannons would need to fire towards an intersecting point to be particularly usable. That's an extra layer of complexity than what's really required. I certainly hope the individual gun's horizontal orientation can be adjusted so the point of intersection can be configured to help mitigate that flaw, but I kinda doubt it if I'm being honest. Again, I get it, it's a nice aesthetic, but there are some pretty good reasons that very few multi-barreled tank designs have made it off the drawing board and into metal. Also, in relation to the turret, I'm disappointed not to see a coaxial machine gun, or really any small arms in general. Granted, it is quite possible that the new ones looted the Deathbringers that might have been mounted upon her hull at some point in the years that have passed by before our favorite Nora stumbles upon the fossils of the Orthros. Next, my final thought on the turret is that it's a bit too shot trappy for my liking. Both the center of the turret, and perhaps more damningly, the bottom of the turret, would certainly direct incoming fire back into the vehicle, likely causing the turret to launch skyward like we've seen so many times in recent months. Okay, now for my non-turret related cons, of which there are two. Orthros is missing, at least to my eye, advanced countermeasures, such as shielding, which I would expect given the existence of personal shielded armor and the various models of zoids that sport the shields in universe. Given that Orthros is pitted against swarms of robots with advanced tech energy weapons, and the like. It's very odd to me that these systems haven't been grafted onto the tank. Similarly, I find it disappointing that there are only really two main cannons for offensive options. Those cannons are good for the bigger bots, but as the name Swarm implies, there are a lot of tangos out there, and I'd have liked to have seen some auxiliary armaments, like missile launchers, mine throwers, or drone launchers. Again, things that the robots in-game have. Although, I must admit that in lore, humanity didn't exactly have the luxury of time to retrofit their vehicles, so depending on how long conventional war had been outdated, such a deficiency could be tolerated. By that same token though, they managed to whip up a program to revive the Earth from complete biomass exhaustion in that same limited time frame, so it seems like there probably should have been a way. Finally, we have a solitary interesting bit. The chassis and turret look to be interchangeable. Not that I recall seeing this for a fact in universe, although I have seen some concept art that featured a different turret design mounted on the same chassis. Talk about functionality and modularity. I really like the idea of various configurations being used to meet the given mission parameters. Oh, we have a massive metal devil Horus, the end all of war machines coming in? I think I'll take the rail guns. Contrast that with Captain Spidingo, we've got a tsunami of scarabs coming in. Yeah, I think I'd like some sort of high caliber IFV style gun, or maybe a fancy futuristic energy shotgun turret. You know what I mean? Anyways, that wraps up the pros, cons, and interesting bits. If you think of something I missed, swarm the comments with your thoughts. Okay, now for a few questions I'd love to have your help answering. First off, I understand that the Orthros is a tool of desperation, but how effective do you think such a thing could actually have been against the swarm? Sure, it could vaporize a corruptor with a hit, but what are the chances of that actually happening? Then it comes to the Horus and all its armored tentacles. The chances of a meaningful hit to the main body plummet dramatically. I imagine a Horus could lose all of its tentacles and still wipe out a division of Orthroses, no problem. This leads me to believe Orthros is purely there as a target to slow down the swarm with fresh biomass to eat. But hey, maybe I missed something that makes the system far more useful than I'm giving it credit for. 
Next, I wanted to ponder about the type of AI the Harrys could employ, given the swarm's electronic warfare prowess. I'd imagine AI was present in some capacity, but not particularly advanced, and certainly not networked. This sadly would hamper the MBT's effectiveness even more, given the premium that is put on Battlefield Intel. I mean, imagine the damage coordinated targeting data from a division of Orthros's could do against a hardened target. Maybe even enough to give a Horus a boo-boo. But alas, I doubt that capability was available to the old ones. For my last question, and this is kind of more of a general question about the Horizon universe as a whole, what exactly powers the tech of the old ones? I mean, we know the swarm converts biomass to energy, but what do we know about the old one's power cells? I recall that there have been a few, or maybe just one, hydroelectric energy plants in universe and wind farms, but barring huge advancements in efficiency for those processes, that's not going to power all of old one's society. I also find it odd that I don't recall a single nuclear power plant in the Horizon series, but maybe that's my fallout bias presenting itself. So. What is powering the Orthros then? Oil? Nuclear energy? Biomass? Your guess is as good as mine. Probably better. I look forward to seeing you in the comments below. Hey there, friend. Before you click off, I just wanted to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please come on to the like button like Erend attempting to woo Aloy. And subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Spy Dingo, out.